Narcissus Lens. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. And just in case some of you don't realise this, I'm a diagnosed narcissistic psychopath. I've been diagnosed with both narcissistic personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder. And I am what is known as an aware narcissist. I know what I am. I know why I do the things that I do. I have no sense of remorse, no conscience, no guilt. I don't experience fear. I need to control people. I need to draw fuel from them. I extract character traits and residual benefits from people. People are appliances. They are there to be used. Someone once asked me if I missed them. And this was a reader, knowing that I'm a narcissistic psychopath, asked if I missed them. And I explained, no. I don't miss my television set. And I view people as appliances, like washing machines, toasters, television sets, kettles, coffee machines. Of course, in my private life, if somebody asked, HG, although of course they wouldn't address me as such, let's say, for instance, my name's Boris. It's not, but today I shall be Boris. If somebody in my private life said, Boris, did you miss me? Dependent upon the necessity of the assertion of control over that individual, as to whether I would do so in a benign or malign fashion, I may well say, if they're painted white, yes, of course I've missed you. Each day without you is like walking through a desert. Dry, empty, scorching, unpleasant. Thank goodness you're back. I would, of course, say that with a glint in my eye, knowing that whilst I was both being apparently affectionate to them, there was a degree of piss-taking taking place, which is in accordance with the manner by which I operate. Of course, if I dictated that the appropriate response in order to assert control, because this individual needed to be punished, perhaps because they had gone off and done something else without me in the first place, and thus they were painted black, would be for me to respond by saying to them, no, not missed you at all, actually. Been very busy updating my collection of gemstones, polishing them, labelling them, admiring them. That kept me very busy. I didn't have a moment to think about you. And there I dismiss the individual and I triangulate them with another, in my view, inanimate object that I compare checking out my gemstone collection as being far more interesting and worthwhile than ever thinking about them. And then, as a consequence of my callous and dismissive manner, they cry. I know that I've asserted control over them and their tears are negative fuel that power me the fuel that I absorb. All of this, of course, is as a consequence of the lens through which I look at the world. I look at a world, I look at the world rather, as an aware narcissist. But for most of you, the narcissists that you will interact with are unaware, what I categorise as lesser and mid-range narcissists. Narcissists that manipulate, Narcissists that have no emotional empathy. Narcissists that need the prime aims, just in the similar way that I do. But they're unaware that they need the prime aims. They're unaware that they have no emotional empathy. I know I have none. And they're unaware that they manipulate. Their lens is an important one for you to understand. And I repeatedly explain this to people. Of course, they sometimes struggle with this because it's an alien concept and also the presence of emotional thinking doesn't want them to accept the logic of what I'm explaining. Often, people repeatedly fail to grasp that we see the world differently to you when it comes to interactions. When it comes to an individual that operates with emotional empathy, they see the world through a lens of emotional empathy. It guards their behaviours. It guides their actions. It steers them through life to behave in a particular way so they recognise boundaries, that they act in a considerate and compassionate way. We don't look at the world through a lens of 
emotional empathy, we look at it through the narcissistic lens, which is all about the pursuit of the prime aims, chief of which are fuel and control. I know that I look at the world that way, but I also understand the world the way that you look at the world. Unaware narcissists also look at the world through the narcissistic lens, but don't realise that they do. So often, of course, victims cannot grasp that we see the world differently and think that the narcissist knows full well what they're doing. The narcissist is well aware of what they're up to. And that's wrong. And it's important for you to grasp that the way that you see the world is not the correct version of the way of seeing the world. It is just a version of seeing the world. And it's important for you to grasp that we look at the world in a different way through our narcissist lens. You don't have to like it. Indeed, I'd be surprised if you did like it. But you must understand it. Because if you don't, all you will end up doing is being kept in a position of paralysis by thinking, he must know what he's doing. If I put the evidence in front of him and explain it to him, he has to be able to accept and understand it. And therefore, I can get him or her to change, to alter the behaviours. They must be capable of achieving that in some way. Now, of course, that is a common mistake that's made by a victim. What I want you to accept, to understand and to apply because it's pure, cold, hard logic is this. We see the world through the narcissist lens of the prime aims and that's what governs our responses, our decisions, our actions and our behaviours. And there is more than one way of seeing the world. And in order to drive this point home, to get you to understand that your perception isn't the only perception and nor is it the right perception. It's the right perception for you because it's your view. In the same way that our narcissistic perspective through the narcissistic lens is the right perception for us because it enables us to achieve what we need. Fuel, control, character traits and residual benefits. It's the wrong one for you because invariably it leads to you being manipulated either in a benign way which you don't tend to have a problem with because you don't see it as a manipulation but you are being manipulated and of course because you're being manipulated in a benign way. You're physically assaulted. You're sexually assaulted. You have your money taken. You're given long involved explanations, circular conversations. You are given instances of information that makes no sense to you. You're triangulated with people and with objects. You're made to feel upset. You're physically hurt. You're emotionally downtrodden. Your self-esteem takes a pounding. Your confidence is at a low ebb. Those are the outcomes. So, of course, the way that we see the world and the way that we behave is detrimental to you. But we simply don't care. There are those of our kind who don't notice it. There are those of our kind who realise that there is a bad outcome for you, but it's justified because it's not our fault. It's your fault. And then there are those of our kind who recognise that there is a bad outcome for you and that's just the way it has to be because we come first and everything else comes second. But it is important for you to understand that there is this differing perception, that there is no sole one perception of the world, that the narcissist does not see it exactly the way that you do but chooses to ignore it. No. We have been created in a way that we see the world through the narcissistic lens. And to get you to understand this point, I'd like you to consider the sense of smell. Smell, of course, is another perception in the way sight is and taste and touch and hearing. All of those senses enable us to perceive the world in a particular way. Many people perceive the world in a similar fashion because they have evolved in a similar fashion so that the way that they all see the world, smell the world, taste the world, see the nature of the interactions, make moral judgments is pretty similar because they've evolved through that majority perspective. We share some of those perspectives. What I see as a tree, you see as a tree. 
what you describe as something that has blades and is green and sometimes has weeds growing amongst it, you know as grass. I call it grass as well. But when it comes to the interactions with people, the way that you as a non-narcissist see it is entirely different from the way that we see it. And to understand that that different perception exists and is very real and is important for you to grasp, take the issue of smell. We have around about 350 to 400 odour receptors, which enable us to actually distinguish between many, many millions, tens of millions, maybe even 100 millions of different odours. Very complicated olfactory function. However, there is a hormone that's called androstenone. And with this hormone, a third of the people that smell it have no discernible note, no discernible odour. It is odourless to them. Yet another third of people would say, ooh, that smells like urine. And another third of people would say, it's a slightly sweet sandalwood scent to it. Now, Androstenone is that hormone, and it's the same one that's being presented to three different people. Yet one can't smell anything, one finds it unpleasant, and one finds it pleasant. Yet it's the same thing that's being placed in front of them. Why do they have those differing reactions? Because they perceive the scent differently. Whilst we have 350 to 400 odour receptors, only half of those receptors are common to all people meaning that certain receptors are present for some and absent for others, resulting in us perceiving scents and smells differently. So it's not only just the case that someone might say, oh, I really like the smell of cooked grass, and somebody goes, oh no, I can't stand it. In part, that is because of the perception that's different. But even when you have something which smells the same, or rather it is the same thing, the perception of that scent is entirely different. So it's not just a case of, what's this scent to you? Oh, it's cut grass. Yes, it's cut grass. I like it. I don't. There, the perception is the same in terms of it's recognised as a scent that is cut grass. But the reaction is different based upon preference. With this example, the actual perception is different. Some have no... some don't smell anything, some people don't smell anything, some smell urine, and some smell sandalwood. The same thing is presented to them, yet they perceive it differently. And that is how you have to understand it with regard to the narcissist lens. We see the same actions and events as you, but when they go through our lens, they are perceived differently, because we see them through an alternative filter, the one filter of control. Namely, are you giving us control or are you threatening control? And that is how we see everything. That is our lens. And so we perceive matters differently to you. It's hugely important that you grasp and apply this as it is central to your understanding of how the narcissist operates. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.